Once again, I want to talk to you today about a somewhat controversial issue. This is one of those what we here at CHR have come to call fashions of the moment, uh, which unfortunately, on a pretty regular basis, infect our specialty. A few years ago, uh, some investigators uh, in Las Vegas started promoting the concept of avoiding fresh embryo transfers in IVF cycles. In current still standard IVF practice, uh, we for over almost 40 years uh, have always preferred fresh embryo transfers over frozen embryo transfers. And the reason was that uniformly fresh embryos performed better than frozen embryos. Now in the early days of IVF there were maybe technical reasons at least partially behind those results because our abilities to freeze embryos were not as good as they are today. And so over time as our uh, abilities to freeze embryos greatly improved and that has really especially in the last decade uh, found increasing application in in IVF uh, we have gotten so much better with embryo freezing that some people started uh, to consider the option of transferring only frozen embryos and their motivation was the hypothesis and it is important for you to understand that this is purely a hypothesis uh, their hypothesis was that in a fresh cycle in a stimulated cycle hormone levels are so high they are so-called supraphysiological that they negatively affect the endometrium and therefore reduce chances of embryos to implant. Theoretically, again, one of those wonderful concepts that sounds very, very good, uh, may have some logic behind it, but before it is translated into clinical practice, obviously should be very, very carefully investigate it because the downside of being wrong is that instead of improving IVF outcomes you start uh, really negatively affecting IVF outcomes and we have seen that happening in our field over the last decade unfortunately on quite a number of occasions with other so-called fashions of the moment whether that is now uh, pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy now called PGTA, in past called uh, pre-implantation genetic screening or PGS, uh, or uh, other rather short-lived interventions uh, into routine IVF practice that have been promoted here and there. So, unfortunately, uh, this concept of uh, all freeze and then transfer uh, quickly gained popularity based on studies that, as is again so often the case, were not properly conducted and more importantly were not properly analyzed. One of the big problems that we face in IVF practice is that when studies are performed and they are performed in highly selected patient populations. But the results that are obtained in those studies are then announced as applicable to everybody. Uh, this is happening all the time and this also happened uh, in this instance. There are obviously patients who may benefit 
from all three cycles. I mean, the most obvious ones are patients who do not have adequate thickness of their endometrium at time of a fresh transfer. Or they may be patients who are hyperstimulated and you don't want to endanger them uh, by getting pregnant while being already hyperstimulated because pregnancy would make things even worse. Nobody argues that embryos should be frozen in all of those cycles. But to make it a routine procedure on everybody, including older patients who may just have one or two embryos, is simply silly. And therefore, this video is meant to tell you to be very careful when somebody is trying to tell you that you should automatically have all of your embryos frozen and then transferred uh, at a later time. And besides that point, it's also more expensive. Thanks for listening.